In this episode, we are going to solve a problem under portion, a simple one. Now let's look at the problem. A steel shaft, 35 mm in diameter and 1.2 m long is held at one end and has a wheel with 500 mm diameter key to the other end. Now the G, the shear modulus of the material is 80 gigapascal. We are to I. What load applied tangential to the rim will produce the torsion shear of 60 megapascal? And after that, we look at how many degrees would the wheel turn when the load is applied. So let's get to work. Solution, we can write down our parameters and start working with that. So first we are having a steel shaft. So we can write the diameter of the steel shaft or diameter of shaft to be 35 millimeters. This two meters is going to be 0 0.035 meters. Are we okay? And 1.2 long. We also have the length of the shaft. Length of the shaft is 1.2 meters, which is also 1200 mm, right? Which is 1.2 meters. The reason I'm converting to both millimeters and meters because you can choose to work with any of them. So I'll be focusing on both so that you know how to work with both the next time. All right. So what do we have again? We also have at one end of the shaft has a hand wheel of diameter 500 mm key to the other end. Remember the shaft is fixed to one end and it is also key to a hand wheel at the other end. So we have diameter of the wheel 2 given. Diameter of wheel is 500 mm and that is going to give us 0 0.5 m. Okay. The shear modulus of the material, the G, is going to be, we have 80 10 to the power one nine right pascal and if i'm to turn this to millimeters then this is going to give me 80 kilo remember that is going to be kilo newton millimeter square because every mega is what newton millimeter square so if you take mega out of nine mega is power six if you take 6 out of 9, you are going to still left with 1 a kilo, which is 3. Alright, so it's simple. Let's draw the free body diagram so that we can understand what we are doing. We have a bar which is fixed at one point. So it is fixed here. This way. And... It is also keyed to a wheel, a circular wheel at the other end. So let's look at this this way. So it is keyed to a wheel this way. We have this. So like we have a wheel at the other end. All the dimensions are given. So dimension of shaft. We have it as 35. We have the length as what 1.2 and the diam diameter of the wheel is also given us we have 500 mm all right so let's look at the point i it says what load applied tangential to the rim of the wheel will produce a torsion shear of 60 mega pascal so we can also write the shear is given a certain shear is given as what 60 mega pascal and that is going to be 60 newton per mm square all right 
So we want to know a certain force that we can apply. Say force or load. That when we apply to the ends of this wheel, it is going to cause a torsion shear of 60 megapascal. And you can see that once you start to turn this wheel, because it is key to the shaft, the shaft will be also what turning. It's like the steer of what a vehicle. Once you start to apply a force to pull this one down, you will start to also twist the bar because it is keyed to it. It is fixed. So any movement in the wheel will cause a movement in the shaft. Are we okay? So we want to know if it is going to affect the angle. Yes, it is going to affect because once you apply a force down here, it is going to twist the shaft at an angle. So now we have that idea over there. And since it is keyed from a distance, then we can say that this force is going to cause what? A torsion. We must convert this force to a torsion. This is going to cause a rotation, a twist. So we can convert it to what? A torsion. Is that right? Yes. And we know that torsion for a fixed or for circular bars is going to be always the load or the force multiplying the distance from the center. That's the distance from the center. This is the relation. If you want to convert a particular force and look at how it is going to produce a torque, this is the relation. The force multiplying the distance from this fixed center. So our torque is going to be we don't know the force because the question says we should calculate the load, which is also what? The force applied. Now we don't know, but do we know the, since we are applying that force to the wheel, do we know the center, the distance from the force to the center? Yes, we know the diameter to be 500 mm. Therefore, from the force to the center is going to be a radius, which is going to be 250 mm right all right so we can decide to work in both millimeters and meters but since i'm converting everything to millimeter let me try working in what millimeter so that means the distance from the center is going to be what a radius which is 250 mm in that case i can say my torque is 250 the force or the load equation what hmm. all right now remember whatever torque is applied applied to the wheel is going to affect the shaft whatever rotation you cause to the wheel is going to affect the shaft now for a shaft we know the polar moment the second polar moment of the shaft we can calculate as this is a solid shaft is not a hollow one so we know the formula as pi on 32 and we have our d4 that is going to be pi on 32 what is the diameter of the shaft the diameter of the shaft is giving us we have 35 mm so we can bring in our 35 raised to the power 4 and this j is going to give us Still, I'm working in millimeters. That is 147.324 10 to the power 3 mm4. Are we okay? So, this is our J. Now we have J, we have the torque. Since we know that the torque in the wheel is equal to whatever torque that is happening in the shaft, then we can bring our equation, our torque equation. Now, from the general formula, we have the torque general formula. That is going to be the torque on J should be equal to G theta on L. That is going to be shear on what? R. Now, we can combine the first part to the last part to get an equation such that we can say T on J should be equal to a shear on a radius do we have that now what is the torque 
we are now considering the shaft because the only thing we wanted to derive from the wheel was the torque and we are now having the torque expression so we consider the shaft now the torque produced was 250 f which is the load on the j what value are we getting we just calculated the j as 147.3 to the power what three equal to a shear and we saw that the question is saying we want to produce a torsional shear of 60 megapascal since we are working in millimeters that is going to be 60 on radius and this radius we are considered we are still working with the shaft so the radius of the shaft since the diameter of the shaft is 35 its radius is going to be 17.5 right so this we can make the f the subject which is the force this is going to give us 147.32 10 to the power 3 multiplying 60 or divided by 250 by 17.5 and our f is going to be 220.44 newton so now we've seen the force f applied to the wheel that is producing that 60 megapascal are we okay so we can conclude that the i the load applied tangential because we applied it tangentially to the wheel is equal to 2020.44 newton are we okay so this is the load applied to cause that shear we can move to the ii part which says we should find how many degrees would with the wheel turn when the load is applied. Now that we know the load, by how many degrees, either in radians, so that we convert it back to degrees, how many turns is it going to cause the bar to rotate? So let's look at that. Now, if you look at the question well, we can use and you look at the general formula we can use two expressions to calculate for the theta we can either combine the first part and the second part to calculate for the rotation or the theta we can also use the second part and the last part the third part to also calculate for the theta so we are not sure of which one is going to give us the correct answer in that case, we have to combine the two and see which is which. Is that clear? All right. So first, let's combine the theta, the first part, and the second part. So let me move to a new page. This is what we are going to have. So if I'm going to combine then i know that my theta is going to be a certain torque load on g j right okay so this is equal to now the torque expression was 250 multiplying the force and now we know that the force is 2020.44 multiplying the length now the length of the bar was 1.2 but i'm still working in millimeters so that is going to be 1200 everything divided by the the g the g was 80 mega or gigapascal so converting it to millimeters is going to be 80 to the power of 3 multiplying the g that we calculated in millimeters and that is 3 to 4 to the power 10 raised to the power 3. And with this, we are going to get our theta to be 0 0.0514. Remember, the standard unit is what? Radians. But the question was, how many degrees? So we have to convert this to degrees. And that is going to be 0 0.0514 multiplying 180 on pi. This is going to give us 2.9 degrees are we okay so 
with this combination we are getting this as 2.9 degrees are we okay all right so we can even yes use this as the answer yes because if we still work with the other part it is going to give us the same expression or the same answer it's, it's okay let's this is the angle of what rotation we are going to have it is going to tend by this degree are we okay thank you for watching this episode please subscribe to the channel